All right, video on a couple of subjects. Sorry, lawnmower. Anyway, um, yeah, I guess part of it's going to be consciousness related to Pyro, Pyro, uh, Dana Garrett, and I guess conference report. Um, but anyway, first, to be serious, made another in a video, I don't know, saying sh direct, indirect conversation, uh, blah, blah, I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, the point is, she again used that word altruism as if it has a, as if it has any other meaning than to um, an intelligent organism. Any other altruism displayed in nature is a deception. The altruism exists for a reason, or what appears to be the altruism, is because it has this survival benefit to take care of your own kind. Uh, but you're not going to find any true altruism where some sort of unbigoted, disciplined perception of, uh, you know, some adversary or some some person you're in, in, in competition with for your very survival and you're going to behave altruistically. That just doesn't happen in nature. So, yeah, obviously we care for each other when it's to our advantage. That's not exactly altruism. Uh, so, altruism is a intellectual concept. It's a concept that's spread by intelligence, not by genetics. Uh, it's not an emotional quality. And if you depend on it to be emotional, uh, that's where you'll fail. Because it, and it'll end up just being bigoted. It'll just end up being, oh, I like the cute kids, or oh, I like the pretty people, or some other kind of crap like that. And, uh, it won't be reason-based, it'll just be based on some sort of identification with, uh, you know, a, a classification, like I fit into that class, so I feel I identify with that group, and that would be similar to a genetic uh, correlate. You could certainly find a genetic correlate to such behavior. So anyway, enough of that crap. Uh, but yeah, she just made this obscure argument that somehow if you talk about antinatalism that you somehow are defeating anybody doing, like, curing AIDS or something. Like somehow those two concepts are in conflict. Like somehow antinatalists would vote against a cure for AIDS. <laughs> it's just so stupid. Uh, the most pressing concern, I would argue, the is overpopulation. It is the number one problem on planet Earth. So I don't see how antinatalism as a conversation could do anything but help uh, maybe uh, do something constructive on that front. Uh, you know, this isn't like, uh, you know, everybody's just gonna all jump on board and we're not gonna have any problems. So even in the best case scenario, it's going to take a little time. Uh, and, and why wouldn't it be constructive? It, you know, you're going to go down exactly the same road uh, the antinatalist is going to go down to uh, fix any human problem. Whether it's resource allocation or the economy. And all of these problems require rational population growth. Uh, so as long as that remains unsustainably stupid and moronic and backward and totally counterproductive in that um, people in the worst circumstances are breeding the quickest, uh, yeah, the human races fail. But the bottom line is, look, you can, you know, <laughs> yeah, our, our culture is fail, uh, our species is fail, and the bottom line is life is fail. That's why the other two things are fail. It's because life itself is fail. It's stupid. It's uh, natural selection is moronic. Uh, desire for the sake of it is moronic. Uh, need, without need, 
a need that doesn't need to exist is the ultimate perfect moron. It's not an oxymoron, it's a perfect moron. <laughs> yeah, score a 10 on the perfect moron scale. Uh, you can't get dumber than that. Oh yeah, let's create some unnecessary need. Well, that fails. So anyway, I'm not going to make the anti-natalism argument in this video, but it seems kind of silly to argue that because people advocate for the best, most efficient, simplest, uh, most direct solution to the problem, which is just to quit procreating, uh, that somehow they're committing a crime. And that's just ludicrous. And somehow they're against, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, you know, higher yield crops, or vegetarianism, or reforming the education system, or reforming the political system, or we could go down the whole frickin' list of all the things that anti-natalists would be perfectly happy to see accomplished, uh, you know, before we, uh, you know, bail on the Titanic. I mean, who, everybody's for sweeping the floors and waxing the bar and, uh, Sparkling the place up nice. Why not? Uh, human race ain't gonna do that, <laughs> but uh, we're not against it. So anyway, it's just that the more efficient straight line is just to get the human psychology as the problem. So fix that. Just get people to quit desiring to make uh, to do uh, sadistic Frankenstein experiments on their children. And once we can get them to stop desiring to be sadistic, mangalo-like mad doctors with other things, consciousnesses, uh, yeah, win-win. So anyway, I'm on a pyro, pyro. So he did this convoluted response to conference report. Where he explains this, you know, uh, run, spot, run, ball, red, run. I mean, you know, this crappy vocabulary lesson, <laughs> you know, but he just keeps moving the goalpost. So he makes videos and he talks about consciousness, then he talks about awareness, then he talks about all this other crap, and then he just basically says, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Consciousness is reproducing and life is reproducing and this and that, and then we're back to the same old arguments. He just, he's just completely circular. A sperm cell does not reproduce. It doesn't. So it isn't dead? It's not alive? Is that your argument? It doesn't move like a living thing? I think it beats the hell out of your paramecium. But anyway, it certainly will beat it in a race. Uh, you know, but it's just a, it's an idiotic conversation. Uh, we know what consciousness is because we experience it. And uh, we also unexperience it, which is the key. Uh, you know, very easily. I could have tripped on that tree and been unconscious. Everything still would have been working, heart still beating, blood still pumping, everything moving around, clickety-clack, I just wouldn't be here. Uh, anyway, it's a dopey, idiotic conversation. Consciousness is a phenomenon of neurology, substantial neurology even. And uh, yeah, I'll put some bees in the background. Bees, they're a pretty good symbol for evolution at its most harsh and direct. I mean, you can just see it. They just live to do the reproducing thing. That's all they live for. Uh, you know, every waking moment is devoted to the uh, procreation, to feeding the young, caring for the young. And it's just uh, it's insidious. Anyway, um, so yeah, Pi Pi was just moving the goalposts. Just change. Just he makes up a new definition of what he's talking about every three minutes, and uh, it's just bullshit. So, uh, you know, we're, we're back to this qualitative thing. I mean, we know what happens in mammals. We know what they feel. We know they desire. We know they have an, an emotional life. Uh, it's just not complicated. We do two things. All right, they might be the same thing, but they're obviously, we can tell the difference between them. So there are at least subcategories of a same thing. We feel and we think. Uh, you know, we conceptualize. And uh, 
I just don't see any need not to understand that. And the, the humans, the only thing they do differently is they think bigger and better than anything else. But that's it. We, you know, our desire isn't better. Our motivators aren't better. Our capacity to feel isn't better. We just have more information and can do bigger conceptualizations based on time and place and understand so much more context. Um, yeah. And this is a dilemma because there's lots of sentient creatures living in harsh, brutal environments, uh, many of them of our creation. And it's bullshit. Uh, so what else? Yeah, car for support said some things I didn't care for too much either. So I might as well try to remember what those were. Um, but he does seem to make a, a distinction and call it human consciousness. I just think that's kind of bogus. You know what, is it based on IQ? I mean, is a retard a, a, a less conscious being? I don't think so. Um, they're just not as smart. <laughs> you know, but they can certainly suffer. They can certainly be afraid. Uh, they can certainly experience every other emotion we feel. And frankly, uh, that's the only part of my existence I give a rat's ass about. I mean, all this conceptualization shit is really nice. But uh, I'm not likely to cure AIDS. So, uh, what good is it? <laughs> you know, it is, that doesn't make me happy. Uh, thoughts aren't... They're nothing. They're, 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 only, they're only as good as their use in terms of how they make something feel. That's the bottom line. We make each other's lives better. People come along and explain to the other humans that, look, it's just luck that you're not a slave. Don't you understand that? So, I mean, you know, how would you like to be born in that circumstance, idiot? And the guy can think and say, oh yeah, I wouldn't like that very much. Maybe we should stop doing that. I mean, it's not that complicated. It's just about comfort and, and, and trying to, to uh, grasp it efficiently. And uh, so now we're back full circle. And what's the most efficient way to grasp it is not to create the necessity, the need to chase it not to create the discomfort that basically is the default state of the animal. I mean, our default state is discomfort. There's something always a little bit wrong, you know? This is a nice walk, but yeah, a lounge chair right now would be kind of nice. Maybe a beer. Yeah. Some company. So, yeah, it's going to always be improved. There's always something missing. Uh, we're need machines, need machines, need machines, need machines, need machines. Uh, this glorification of consciousness is some other kind of mechanism. It's a need creator. It, oh, that's what I wanted to sort of get to, but I'm running out of time. You know, somebody left a comment, you know, sort of this discussion about the synthetic feeling thing. And I really just don't think it's going to be that easy to create a synthetic feeling. Uh, it's, a, it's a weird concept. You know, I mean, I, I don't know, you know, it's hard to program something like that. Because you can write a program that'll make a computer say, ouch, but it won't feel the ouch. And it won't have a self-interest. I guess it's the more important thing. It won't have a conception of a self. It will only have an idea of it. Uh, that's a, a weird distinction, isn't it? It won't have a felt self. It will have an idea of a self. And those two things aren't the same. Um, right, it certainly could be done, I think, and once we understand the mechanism. But it's that, again, I'm going to use that word, continuity problem. Uh, we evolved having both of these things. Intelligence needs feelings. Feelings need intelligence. 
and uh, they evolve together into each other and uh, I don't know how you would duplicate that evolution. I'd also seen the cheap shot that Pyro took at that big dog, you know, the mechanical robot -y thing. I mean, I don't know what their newest version's like. I mean, that one's like four years old. But, uh, yeah, it's four years old. <laughs> I mean, you know, bugs have had billions of years to evolve. Well, hundreds of millions. Uh, so it's kind of a cheap shot to say, it doesn't look alive to me. Well, <laughs> yeah, give it a, a couple of decades and it's going to fuck you up, fella. Because you're not going to be able to tell the difference. So I think that was really a bogus remark. You know, it doesn't look alive to me. Yeah, like I said, a little bit of work, a little evolution. And uh, they put a little skin on that thing. And uh, it's going to look friggin' alive, buddy. So you fail with that bullshit rhetoric. Uh, it certainly looks as alive as a paramecium. <laughs> so anyway, till next time. And such. Oh, tired. Long day, man. I had to work all day. Fuck.